Public Enlightenment Radio Series brought to you by the Bankers Committee. You can call us FLP for short. That's that's why we're here essentially. And from now up until 6 p.m., you will be listening to and even participating in some premium top-notch financial literacy conversation. Well, thanks to the Bankers Committee and all of its partners, you'll be hearing firsthand from experts on how to scale up your business how to access some profitable government policies and support so that you can ultimately grow your business, grow your personal finance and be better for it. And ultimately, so our nation, Nigeria, can be better for it. Plus, if you're facing financial challenges or any kind of challenge in your business, hey, we're here for you. It's amazing, amazing initiative. I'm your host, Kyle Doki Kyulu, and uh, we're in the ninth edition, I must say, in the series. In case you missed up or you missed out on the previous editions, you can always catch all of them on our website. I'll be telling you where to go in a moment. But I'll tell you this it's all. It is premium. It is. B-I-G, big. Tell me or tell you, you can take this to the bank. And I mean that literally, because today we're talking about how to get that money or financing that you need for your business. I'm going to take it slow now because this is important. You know what you say, money talk is a very important matter in Nigeria and everywhere indeed. Well, last week was about adding value to your products and services for better exports, earning that Forex. And you know what hit me? A lot of people kept asking, how do I get funds to scale up? Because clearly getting funds financing is vital to you scaling up and eventually adding value. Well, today we'll be answering all of those questions and breaking it down to the simplest. In fact, you can call this episode the ABCs of raising finance for your business. So I've got some brilliant minds in the financial sector as always, yes, and it'll be showing us the way. You know what they say in uh, your language and to my way no more essentially saying if you know the road <laughs> then you are brilliant we're on zoom by the way yes we're on youtube you can send us a message or you can even call us how about social media we're there as well we're literally everywhere if you want to call us uh the number to call us on this evening is 0901 577 so let me just get that out of the way okay we want to hear from you so Take your phone and call us at the appropriate time, by the way, on 0901-577-9472. You can also send us text messages. We read your text messages on 0909-861-5403. I'll take it again for the benefit of those who probably didn't catch it the first time. The number to send us a message on is 0909-861-5403. So ladies and gentlemen, Let's make some profit today, shall we? And don't enjoy this alone, let me tell you. Don't enjoy this alone. So share it with your friends, your families, your business partners, your neighbors. Let's ensure that we get this information out there so we can be better for it. I'm ready for today's conversation. I don't know about you, so get comfortable as I introduce our resource persons uh, this evening. So where do I start from? Let me start from the man right next to me. Yeah, we're on Zoom, by the way. So in case you're on Zoom, you get an extra value of seeing video, seeing what's happening in our studio. So right next to me, I've got uh, Abolore Sholebo, who is acting head, corporate bank directorate at Fidelity Bank. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you so much for having me. You see, he had to take off his jacket because yeah. this is a very important conversation. <laughs> uh, we also have audience in our Abuja studio and virtually. So let me just run through our guests, our resource persons, brilliant people, I must say, this evening. Ayobami Oyebamiji is a head uh, CEM Lagos One. Group risk at Keystone Bank. By the way, CM means credit evaluation and monitoring. It's good to have you, uh, Ayobami. We also have Mansur Imam Abdullahi, who's the group head corporate and structured finance at Jai's Bank PLC. Thank you, Thank you for me. joining us. Also joining us is Ayo Bajamo. Oh, by the way, uh, Mansur Abdullahi is in our Abuja studio, so you can see him if you're on Zoom. 
just sit in, in his suit and tie. Uh, also with us, Ayo Bajamo is the head, Treasury and Financial Institutions, Bank of Industry. This is a very vital part of the conversation, and I'm glad that we have representation. Thank you as well for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. Uh, we'll be having uh, Adebin Pehekuna, Group Head, Products and Market Development, Polaris Bank, is in uh, Wokafo, is a Group Head, Business Banking at Sterling Bank, and of course, any Tofala Day Unit Head, Customer and Transactions uh, Services, Titan Trust Bank. I saw Anita earlier on. Uh, Anita, you're welcome as well. Hi, thank you. Okay, so let's jump right into it. And, um, you know, I don't want to take this for granted, really, that um, everyone is on the same page about, you know, financing, what to do about your business. I want to basics, uh, my panelists. And so let me break this to ladies first. I want to start a business, right? So I'm a young Nigerian and I'm thinking, how can I be financially independent? So I'm thinking, let me start a business. And I've been racking my head about the basic things I need to start a profitable business. Can you just quickly walk us through, let's start from that foundation. What are the basic things you need if you want to start a profitable business? At a big base, yours. Okay, thank you, Kaldi, uh, for having me here. And I'm also excited as much as you are to be on this program. Okay, you're very right. Uh, a lot of people have business ideas and they actually do not know how to start. So, but I'll make it simple and highlight the basic requirements that you actually need to consider to start up a business. So first, really, you have an idea, good is to carry out your market visibility study. And when we say market visibility study, so I'm sure a lot of people hear this, a lot of books write about market visibility study, but in simple terms, what it means is your visibility study should help you to test your idea if it is a totally new business idea, if it's a business that you know, does not exist anywhere in your co country, at least. And the way you do that is to use your friends your classmates, association members, family members to validate that the idea is actually solving an existing problem. Because that's the layman definition of business. Every business must be seen to be solving a particular problem. So first validate that your idea is solving an existing problem. And if it's a business that exists, that is someone or some people are already running the business, so what you need to do in terms of carrying out your feasibility study is to evaluate the impact that the business is making in the market already. And what do we mean by that? It's just for you to check. Is it well accepted in the market? So is it a business that you have demand for it over and over again? Is there room for growth? The players in the space or running this kind of idea, uh, have, they, uh, have they captured the entire market? Has the market, the growth reached its peak? Or you think there is room for you to do more or for a new entrance? Then what competitive advantage do you have that can make you compete favorably? So it's not a case of Mr. A is running the business and I see he's running it profitably. What competitive advantage do you have to be able to compete with the existing business? So that's feasibility study. Then after your feasibility study, you then write your business plan. Business okay, plan can also be elaborate. Pardon me. Pardon me to jump in now. Pardon me to jump in. Um, we'll come back to you. For some of the uh, audience on radio, you might be having difficulty um, hearing Adebin Pei's um, thoughts. She's making an amazing point, really, about how or what you need to start a business, a product that is needed so you can make profit. So we'll come back to you, Adebin, so we can have a well-rounded conversation, especially for the audience on radio, so they can hear what you're saying. I can hear you, but it appears there's a challenge on that end. So let me come to uh, the person right next to me here. Uh, mm -hmm. I have Abolore Shulebo, who is an acting head, corporate bank director at Fidelity Bank. Um, so Adebin has essentially tried to set a foundation about you know, knowing what you need to start a business, which is very vital. Uh, we'll come back to our other guests on Zoom, but let me just take this to uh, a point which she has not made, but which we know she would make, which is funding, right? Funding is 
a major part of starting a business. I don't know what business you need to start. You don't need funding. Even if it's five naira or 10 naira, you'll need some sort of funding. So it is a very vital ingredient in starting businesses. But help us to understand. It is not every time that money is the answer. I know they say money answer at all things, but for businesses, maybe not. To help us understand how a business can actually know when the answer to my profit costs, the deeper leverage on relationships and all of that. So how as a business do you know when it is time that money is my problem and I need to get funded? Okay. Um, so for, for every business, uh, you will require a unique selling point. Um, and this unique selling point will require skills and or cash to make payments for what you don't have. Yeah. Uh, so you have businesses that are very big on skills, but low on capital. For instance, uh, you have medical practice. So a doctor who's gone to school, who knows medicine, can just operate from your room yeah. you know, with, with very little capital. But some businesses are capital intensive. So you need to worry about uh, business, about funding your CapEx requirement. CapEx requirement is capital expenditure. Right. You also need money for OPEX, which is operating expenses. You have salaries and all of that. So um, when you scope your business, you'll be able to know what you require the skill set, the service, and or OPEX requirements and CAPEX requirements. Mm. And once you dimension this, you now know you need funding. You know, so I'd be so hearing many... some interesting terms, yeah. OPEX, CAPEX, and all of that. <laughs> Part of me, I'm not really a business person. I imagine for the audience there. But in, in, in terms of, um, you know, I mean, making it as simple as possible, yeah. you're essentially saying that you, it's not every time that, money is the solution to the problem you're facing as a business. You need to do something. So if you can break all the OPEX and CAPEX down even further for us to understand. Okay. Uh, so like I said, my example, right? Um, every business will require uh, some skill set, some innovation that they're bringing to the table. Mm. Okay. But to, to implement this, you will require funding for two categories of your, of your funding need. In finance, we categorize all our expenditures in two buckets. Okay. So you have the acronym called CAPEX and you have the acronym called OPEX. CAPEX is capital expenditure. OPEX is C-A-P-E-X. Okay. So, and they include, but not limited to your computers because they last for long. Yeah. Your cars, your, your office buildings, all of those, you know, uh, um, equipment, assets that you require to run your business. Then the OPEX are category of expenditure that are more like a day-to-day. -day operating expenses. Operating expenses. Oh, thank you. So, you so pay it's not the OPEX that we know. It's no, 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 okay, OPEX. Okay. Yeah. So you pay, you pay salaries. If you don't have a building, you pay rent. You pay light for lighting. You pay for water. And all those are consumables. Mm -hmm. Those are the OPEX requirements. Okay. So uh, essentially, we've understood the things that uh, uh, I mean you need to have a good business a profitable business I'm hoping we can uh, with them but in the interim while our engineers uh, work on that let, let's move on quickly yeah. so we've established that funding is key is the backbone of any yeah. business and I understand there are lots of ways to raise funds I imagine a listener telling me Kyle they just get into the house to get this money okay Let's get into this. So without wasting time, uh, what are the different ways to raise funds for a business? I, I know there are diverse ways, so different ways to make money or to raise, raise funds, funds, rather. Okay. So you look, the first place to start is to look inwards. Yeah, like look into your bank account. Yeah, so, <laughs> so and I would like to use the illustration. So I need a million naira to start a business. Right. Um, 600 thousand of it is from a capex you know i have to buy tables chairs and computers, all of computers and, and all of that. okay then the four hundred thousand is my like a let's say a six months rolling salary light water requirement so i look inwards to say okay, do i have that money so the first place to start is with you your savings 
the next thing you can go out to family, friends. After that, uh, you look at angel investors. Angel investors, as the name connotes, are people who, who are God sent. Those who buy your idea, buy your vision, and can come in, you know, early in the, you know, in the early stages of the the, the business, business venture. Itself. Yeah, you know, so the the high stake, uh, they take the high risk takers, and um, so above the angel investors, mm -hmm. you now have the private equity venture capital uh, investors who can support your business. Then all of this, uh, they they support the equity side of business. Okay. So for instance, the 1 million, uh, perhaps you, you, you looked inwards, you've spoken to family, you've spoken to friends, you've spoken to angel investors, and you can say, raise $800,000, right. Okay, so there's 200,000 gap. So you now need to look for debt providers. That's borrowing. Yes, so okay. you now go and borrow from a lender that's willing to lend to your business. Okay. That way you can raise the entire one million. Mm -hmm. So that's what you So need. essentially, if you just joined us, uh, uh, Mr. Sholebo here was breaking down the different ways to raise funds, to raise money, finance for your business as a startup, or maybe you've gone some length uh, in it. So he said, you know what, first you can look in words, right? You can look into your bank accounts. Okay. Don't be afraid. Look into it. Uh, you can look around, ask family, friends, and all of that. You can look to angel investors as well. Just people who believe in your dream, in your business, and they want to just give towards it. Okay. Then he also mentioned two others, which we'll be focusing on today, because this one seemed a bit sure. Yeah. You can look into your bank account and what you see is 0 0.05. <laughs> you know, you know, those days now. So Sometimes it doesn't work well. You can also look around to angels and the angels start to demons. They're like, please, I have my own issues. All right. I can't fund your business. But there are two other points he made, vital points. One is equity, equity yeah. financing. You talked yeah. about that. Yeah. And the other one is true debt financing, which is essentially borrowing, D-E-B-T. So let me bring in our guests now via Zoom. It's been sorted uh, so we can get our guests to speak on this. Uh, pardon me, I did being paid. I had to cut you short then, but uh, just... I don't know if you could recap your point in a minute, the point you were making about what you need to start a business. So we can move on to the point about raising funds, raising finance, capital, I'm uh, sorry, equity and debt. So quickly, the point you were making, I didn't pay before we move on. Okay, thank you, Kaldi. Uh, just to quickly wrap up, right? Uh, in addition to having your market uh, visibility studies, another thing you need to do is to write your business plan because your business plan is very essential. If I speak to what my colleague just mentioned now, if you're going to be raising funds, your business plan is actually required to convince uh, whoever is raising funds for you, whether equity or debt financing. So, and in writing your business plan, you simply means describe defining the business, talk about the structure, your funding requirements. A lot of businesses today do not even know what funding requirements they need. You know, they just give a figure. So it's important to define that after you have dimensioned your OPEX and your fixed asset uh, requirements and what with you. So how do you intend to fund the business? It's important to, to, to also state that. Uh, mode of operations, how is your business going to run? Is it going to, are you going to leverage technology or is the brick and mortar kind of uh, model of business? What's your marketing strategy? How do you want to sustain the business and how do you intend to keep this cycle going on and on? So that's the sustainability part of thing. Then register your business, get federal and state tax ID, very important these days. Then you start up. Cody. Did you hear me? Okay, then you start up. And that's where the fund is for, for keeping that show then for. Okay, so let me move on now. Uh, so. A Ballerino Studio has established different kinds of funding. Adebikwe has told us what you need to start a business. So let's get into it. The two major fundings we're looking at today, equity and debt or borrowing. And, and I'll take this to Mansur in our Abuja studio uh, to get your opening comments. And I'd like you to speak to this, right? Equity and debt financing. They seem sure. Okay, Can thank you, you very much, Kaili. Um, 
help the us two are set up what is equity speakers what is debt financing yes. how do they work yes yes equity financing as that denotes that you're selling part of your business to get funding that is to fund your business through the equity that is you're selling a share or you're selling part to go into partnership or someone is investing in part of the business as an owner and then uh, the other side maybe debt financing is a kind of financing where okay you just borrowed money or you get financing when it is maybe like an economic interest kind of thing. You get financing for us and other things. Then the other party is just waiting for his money to get paid and he doesn't own the business. So you, if you look at the two, uh, there, are, there are two different uh, sources in the sense that this other one, the equity uh, may likely take more risk because you don't have as the owner of the business obligation to pay as at the time you are joined in the business and you take risk together. While on the other side, you know, when it is debt, the other party is not taking the risk in the business, just waiting for payment. So you have, as a business owner, you have obligation to pay, which put you in a kind of pressure to make sure that you pay as at 20. While on the other side, the person believes that you will be able to do the business and he invests in that business and you go there to try to share profit or loss in that business. So there are two different uh, approaches. Of course, you can say um, the, the equity uh, is easier because you are sharing uh, a kind of um, profit. You don't have obligation to pay now or you have to wait for the profitability, but then it is more costly because of course the higher the risk, the higher the return. That is why the person invest in the, um, uh, the equity because he's ready to share the loss. Of course, he's ready to share all your future profits. So, but the debt, you see, no matter what profit you make, if you get it right, you can be able to easily pay the debt and, and then continue to enjoy the whole business alone. So it's a double-edged sword kind of thing. At the early stage, uh, um, businesses mostly uh, from all the, you know, you see uh, most of the, uh, the last speakers, you know, you have to start from the family and friends, your own savings, family and friends, you know, a venture cap, all these are capital. Until you go to the last one when you are nurtured mm. and you can be able to pay as a when due, that is when you get attracted to, to, to people that provide debts, that is financing, mostly banks and others. So and at that time, you know, um, you, you, you want to see, okay, your business, can it pay this margin? Can it pay this markup? If it can pay, then you can go for right. uh, the debts. And then uh, those the other people also see, can this business pay? Can it? I don't want to take chances of trials. So they, are, they normally come at some kind of stability of business. That's when you go for, for debt. But equity, you can go right from the beginning. Okay. People that trust you, trust your idea, then can, can go for that. So these are mostly the differentiation uh, between the two. Thank you. Fantastic point you made there. We'll still get deeper into what works mm -hmm. for who who should go for equity, who should go for debt financing, because mm. businesses are varied. I mean, I might want to start a vulcanizing business. You want to start a catering business. I want to go into maybe a, a startup, Silicon Valley headed startup and all of that. So we'll get into who needs what, what you should go for um, as a business. But I'm glad you've broken this down into, you know, the risks, which one is less risky for maybe the borrower, the receiver and the, and the giver or the giver rather. Let me come to Ayobami uh, quickly to get Ayobami's opening thoughts. Uh, we have a full panel today in case you're just joining us. Uh, Ayobami, so we've gotten an understanding really of the different kinds of uh, financing in terms of equity and um, debt, what it entails. But let's zoom in now on equity, okay? Let's zoom in on equity because I, I know that, um, you know what? Let me zoom in on borrowing debts with you because I, I, I know that that's an area credit evaluation and monetary Ayobami. So what are the different types of um, borrowings? What, how do I know as a business person that I should go for borrowing instead of equity? And um, if you can maybe suggest, which kind of borrowing would you advise for what kind of business? It's a lot, but I know you can take it on Ayobami. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so, um... Equity and um, debt funding, um, depending on um, the kind of business that you do and um, your, the um, owner's um, risk appetite. Um, for instance, um, for um, equity financing, 
the shareholders become part of the business. So if you want, um, if you want your shareholders to become part of the business, then um, they give you funding, they become part of the business, you pay them dividends, and um, it goes on like that. For debt, um, debt funding is just um, for a period of time. So um, debt funding is um, when you are seeking funding um, from financial institutions, like um, the commercial banks and cooperatives, um, mortgage banks, um, etc. So depending on um, the kind of business that you do and what exactly you need the funding for, will determine the type of um, funding that you will need. For instance, um, if you go to a bank, for instance, and um, you need money to buy machineries. Let's say, for instance, now you have a bakery and you need um, an oven, you need to buy a generator uh, because um, of um, lack of um, constant and power supply. You go to the bank, you tell your banker, okay, so I want an oven, I want to buy a um, generator, and your banker will now um, in turn um, give you the type of facility that you need. For those kind of um, long-term um, facilities, you get a term loan. Now, that term loan, you pay over a period of time because you are, it is expected that um, those um, machineries are going to serve you for a longer period of time. So it is only appropriate for you to pay over a long period of time. Or if what you need is working capital, for instance, you just need to source for your day-to-day -day running activities. For instance, you want to buy petrol for the gen, you want to pay for salaries, you want to buy raw materials, then you need a working capital loan. At that particular point in time, we will not be giving you a working capital loan based on the cycle of your business. For instance, um, if I bake bread on a daily basis and I sell that bread that same day and I receive cash for that bread. That means that my trading cycle would be a day or two. So for those kind of needs, you need a short-term loan. So for that, we'll give you a short-term working capital facility such that you can be cycling in and out. That means as, as you get money to buy those your um, raw materials, you are paying back in with the proceeds of those um, sales of the bread that you've baked. Mm. So that is um, funding. It. However, if you need um, funding for long-term um, investment, then we'll give you a fa facility that is tailored towards payment over a long period of time. So as not to have a mismatch between your um, funding needs and your repayment um, cycle as well. All right. Thank you very much, um, Ayobami. Interestingly, we have two Ayos on the show this evening, but one is Ayobami who just spoke, and then we have an Ayo Badramo. So we'll go to Ayo Badramo now. So Ayobami seems to be sounding like, you know, debt financing is maybe the way to go because it's even split into long-term and short-term, can even get, you know, working capital kind of loans. But let me find out uh, from Ayo Badramo, really. So we've heard about how debt financing works, but we need to understand how equity financing works. I, I know that I Obama has spoken about how these, uh, those who give you equity financing might be or have a stake in your business, but we need to understand even deeper, but we have a break now. Okay. Sorry. I already went to the appetite. We need to go on a quick break now, gentlemen and ladies. And when we return, we'll continue the conversation. We're still discussing the ABCs of financing your business. We're focusing on debt and equity financing. It's a very, very important conversation, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want to miss this. We're back in just a few seconds. So just grab water and stay with us.
I don't know if you can hear me, but I can hear you. Oh, sorry, we're on a break now. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. I thought maybe the break was is over. <laughs> it's okay. not. Continue the break, please. Yeah, sorry. So I think it's a final commercial now. Oh, I see. Well, it's debatable, actually. All right, we're back on the Financial Literacy and Public Enlightenment radio series brought to you by the Bankers Committee. Uh, we're talking about the ABCs of raising finance, raising money, raising funds for that business to be profitable. And we're focusing on debt and equity this evening. In case you're wondering, what's debt, what's equity? Well, you're in the right place. We're going to explain that to you. And I have a fantastic uh, panelists with me this evening. Adibi Fehe Kuna. Ayobamu Ibamuji, Mansur Abdullahi, Abalor Shulebo, Ayobajamo, Izini, Wokafo, and Enito Falade. These people have years, decades of experience in the financial service sector, and they'll be walking us through how to get that money. All right. So let me come to you, um, Ayobajamo. I know you might have a bias, I may be wrong anyway, but for debt financing, you say that you work with the Bank of Industry, but uh, I your digi, oh sorry, I about me seem to say that you know debt is more of a thing rather than equity. But uh, with your years of experience, what the bank of industry is doing, which would you advise a business person to go for? <laughs> Okay, um, the line seems to be seizing. I don't know whether it's the bandwidth. Um, I'll leave my camera on briefly and then I'll switch it off. Uh, if that can help with the... Yeah, it's good. We can hear you loud and clear. Oh, great. Good evening, everybody. I'm happy to be here with my co-panelists. And uh, just to go straight to the question raised by Coyote, which is better, which is more preferable? Uh, that's a very technical and tricky question. As my colleagues have also said earlier, it all depends on the stage of the business. So there's no hard and fast rule about this. Uh, if your business needs prompt you know, funding, you may have to go for debt. If your business requires patient capital, as has been also alluded to, uh, because investors, equity investors, they are looking long-term typically uh, three, five, ten, maybe for the life of the company, you know. So there are two different types of funding. Uh, I can't say one is better than the other, and I don't really have a bias. Really, <laughs> I am open to debt and uh, and equity because I play on the two sides. Even as head of treasury, as the treasurer in BOI, and then I've had experience on the debt lending side in banking and also in equities as a chartered uh, stockbroker. So I'm not biased at all. Uh, the truth is equity on the long run is usually more expensive. It's usually really? more expensive, exactly. For a business idea, a business venture that is going to be profitable down the line, it's much more expensive to the owners of the business. However, if you are at the starting stage and you don't have the things that are required or that can enable you to access debt, 
then you have no choice than to give up a, a part of your business, which is called a part of your equity. Uh, as you were on break, I scribbled this. I don't know if you can see what this is. These are like yeah. 30, these are like 30 squares, okay? And you can see me shading out three squares in there. Now, that's like a piece of your company. You own 30 units of your company. Let's just say you own 30 units. Let's not go into the mathematics. And you're trying to give up equity or raise equity financing. Keeping it simple, three out of 30 is 10%. So yes. if, you want to, if you want to give up 10% of your company, how do you arrive at a price for that buyer to uh, come in into the, uh, into the business? So it's a bit more complex. I would not go into all of those details. Uh, you need to go through things like your financials, mm -hmm. uh, whether historical or projected. You need to do a valuation of the company to determine the current value uh, you need to determine whether the investor is going to pay a premium or is going to pay a discount. I will pay a premium when I know that, oh, this is a real big viable business. And okay. it's a privilege for you to admit me into that business. So I pay a premium. However. Uh, you can make that point. You can land on that point. Quickly. Okay. So if the risk is so high. I might tell you, sorry, you know, this risk is too high. I don't have a fallback position. I'm going to take your shares at a discount. So I'm just trying to keep it all very simple. Uh, so that's equity finance, which, is good. which you, you give up a part of your business. And I'll keep in this last point. Uh, it does not have to be permanent. There are different types of equities. There are some that are temporary. Uh, there are some that are like convertible. You could start out with it as a debt. If you meet certain milestones, you can convert either way. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Ayo Bajamo with the Bank of Industry. I was going to do a follow-up, but because of time, I need to bring in our other guests. We still have Ezine and Eniton uh, joining us. And I'll take this one to Ezine because the talk about equity got me thinking, wait a minute, this sounds like a good idea, really. Especially at the start, and you see someone who believes in that business wants to own a bit, I mean, 10%, even though the way you paint it now, I was having everything. So isn't it, uh, as a business person, I am new, I am fresh blood, but I need some kind of guidance. Uh, is there a role for government in equity financing? You know, you know, talk about doing evaluation. I, I really don't know what my business is worth. I just know I want to be frying puff puff. I want to be, I want to be a vulcanizer. I want to be a tailor, you know? So is there a role for business in equity financing? You know, and why are these regulations important, really? Because I, I don't want to be cheated as a business owner and as a person providing equity. You don't want to be cheated as well. Exactly. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so as, as a business person, you want to start and you're yeah. thinking of getting equity for your business. Regulation is very, very important. And why is it? Because if anything goes wrong, the regulators are there to also play the role of mediating. And also in the country, you can't just start off and say, I want equity, just go and get it from someone. There is a particular process. There are people, there, there, there's a regulator that regulates um, inflow and when people want to invest in your business. I know some people may do it low key, but actually you have to go through the route and do it normally. They have to have their shares in your company, become directors. Um, SEC has to also okay it. A lot of things, because if not, if anything happens, who are you going to be talking to? Who will you ask? Who will you? And of course, you have to get your lawyers involved. Um, this is not something you wake up and say, somebody has 2 million naira, 3 million and wants to put in my business. Let me just collect it. And there are no terms. There are no nothing. Um, nothing put in place for you to protect you because it's very important. Otherwise, the person can write a contract with you that will take all your business, everything. Maybe um, if anything goes wrong, 100% will come back. He has to take, and you won't know, but it's hidden in the lines. So you have to, first of all, go through your lawyers, understand that you can't just do it alone. Talk to a lawyer. A lawyer will guide you. There are lawyers specific for these particular um, transactions. And then they will guide you so that you are protected. And of course, it's a patient capital and it's really helped you. 
if that's what you need. You know what they say, the patient dog eats the fattest bone. Yeah. So essentially, this is not a sprint. It's, it's a marathon. Like you need to be in for the long haul. Thank you very much, Ezine, uh, for that fantastic call. Let me go to Eniton now to get your opening comments. Uh, so we've laid a lot of foundation, but I've seen your role and some of the work you do. Uh, it just hit me that a lot of people are asking, uh, so equity, and you talk about angel earlier on. So if you could just help us understand our, our, our audience, um, who do you walk up to to get equity financing? Who do you walk up to to get debt financing? Sounds straightforward, but the equity part especially. Who do you Um, I hope you got me there, Anita. Okay. Uh, looks like we may have lost Anita right there, but we'll, we'll come back. We'll come back to him. Let, let's let's move this forward. And I think I'll just come back to you uh, right here in my studio and ask you now. You're my mm -hmm. fallback guy, and you've proven very <laughs> <laughs> you've proven very skillful in, in, in all of this uh, Boloris level. Mm -hmm. So if you could answer that question that is meant for Anita. Is there like an equity bank? Who do I go to? Because I love this equity idea, but who gives me equity? Um, so equity, you can get from different sources. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's just that part of your funding that is not borrowed. And it's for people who have, who can take a risk on your idea. And the reason why they say it's costly is because on the giver side it's costly because they're risking their money. They don't know whether it will be a successful business. On the receiver side, too, they are parting with a lot, you know, the upside of the business. So traditional sources of equity finance would be friends and family. Again. Again. You need to be nice to your friends and family <laughs> if you want to be there, your first point. <laughs> uh, these are people who would have appetites you know, for high risk. And um, they, they, they jump on the bandwagon really quickly. Yeah. And then the most structured equity sources are the private equity, venture capital, mm -hmm. who have a long-term view to every business, you know, so they can invest in your idea. Um, so others are also uh, banks that have um, business arms, you know, that can invest in equity. And a whole lot of uh, sources. Yeah. But those are the predominant sources. For debt finance, there are different types of sources as well. Uh, so you have the banks, you have the development finance institutions, mm -hmm. you have the investing banks, and um, a host you know, of, of other registered lenders, I would advise mm -hmm. not loan sharks and unregistered. I, I was going to get there. Thank you for, for putting that out of the way. So essentially, these avenues are there mm -hmm. for the taking and they have proven, you know, workable or at least profitable for yes. businesses. Thank you very much. So uh, let me go to our debut pay, uh, quickly. By the way, uh, I've seen the questions coming in. We'll take those questions uh, via Zoom, via text. And in case you want to just call us up uh, on the show, you can call us right now, really. You can actually call us. Speak to us on 0901 uh, That's the number you can just send your message, which we'll be getting on 0901. A bit fast this evening. We need to cover a lot of ground. The questions are coming. But I think before I take those questions and the calls, let me ask you this, uh, this one now. Uh, what are the most, so we talk about debt and equity financing, really. So I have decided, or at least I'm close to deciding. You told us what you need to start a business, so I'll need your help again. What are the most important factors to consider before seeking equity and debt financing? Okay, um, thank you, Claudia. Uh, I'm not uh, enabling my video uh, because of network. No, it's okay. okay. Okay, so just like uh, my colleagues have said on the call, really, so it's a function of what you need and the stage at which your business is, right? So if you're looking at a very quick, uh, uh, you have a very quick requirement for cash for your business, right? You can go for debt financing because you have a lot of lenders 
who are available to fund your business. There are a lot of SME-friendly banks who are available to fund your business. And uh, it's actually cheaper, both in the long and in the short run, because interest rate is a function of the period, the conversion cycle, when your loan times out. And I'll give you an example. You know, uh, in terms of doing my work every day, I see that the market is not solely traits when it comes to comparing interest rates or pricing in lending, okay? You see people when they hear 5% and when they hear 30% per annum, for example, and they think the 5% is cheaper because they are not able to analyze it. A 5% flat is about 60% per annum and a 30% per annum uh, is about is less than 2% or 3% per month. So that gap is there in the market. And this is why my colleague has said that debt is cheaper. You take the loan, use it for the purpose in the business, cycle that, and you're fine. You still own your business. Unlike oh, yeah. in the case of equity financing. In the case of equity financing, just like Ayo had broken it down, you're going to give away part of your business. So it means you're going to give away some level of control. All right. Give away, you know some part of your business that you might not be able to take decision quickly. So there are lots of long lists of benefits and disadvantages that you have in equity financing, also in debt financing. But honestly, in terms of flexibility and which one is more simple, the debt financing is actually more simple for business. Okay, thank you very much. I been paid. Quickly, yes or no? There's a question that I need you to answer. Uh, one of the questions okay. that we, we got in. I know it's something you spoke about. And this question is from Madi Saladeba, saying that with respect to the business plan, is it compulsory that someone must write a business plan before starting? I'd be paid yes or no. Is it compulsory? Yes. So okay, guide, there you go. To guide <laughs> Madi you, yeah, to guide <laughs> you and your prospective lender, whether okay, it's so. yeah. It is compulsory, Maddie. I hope that answers your question, all right? It's like a guide, a plan, a blueprint so that you can succeed in your business. All right, let's move on. And we're taking questions now, okay? We have just less than 10 minutes to the end of the show. So I'd like us to take as much questions as we can uh, to our panelists. And I'll direct this one to, um, let me see. Uh, okay, what is equity and liability? I I'm not sure. I think we've talked about that. I, I think Adebimpe was actually answering those questions, right? If I'm correct. I saw you were answering those questions via yeah, text yeah. on the Zoom yeah. platform. Brilliant one there. Uh, so if, you, if you're wondering what is equity and liability, you can, you can want to check uh, the chat box to get the response to those questions. And uh, uh, let me take this one from um, Ashiwaju Fola Osibo. And I'll uh, direct this question to um, Ayobami. I think this question is just perfect for you. And this question from Ashiwaju Fola Osibo is, how do you determine the value of your company vis-a-vis -vis shares value in a startup company, no operations yet, no financial records. Ayobami. Honestly speaking, um, to determine um, <clears throat> the worth of a company, um, there must be records. Um, you must have um, done something in the past. There must be a financial analysis because um, um, you have to know if the company is actually profitable or not. Um, you have to determine the net worth of that business. So if you have a startup that um, does not have... Um, anything to go by hard, then we cannot, it, what you just have is, is assumptions and projections. So basically, for you to know the net worth of a business, uh, the business must have been in existence, um, there must be financial records, uh, there must be uh, profitability records, um, there must be leverage records and all. Uh, sorry, wow. uh, can I chime in yeah. a bit? Can go I ahead, chime absolutely. That? Uh, in the event that uh, it's a new business, they can all equally have access to funding, right? Uh, equity funding. What then happens is that, like he said, you look at the assumptions and there are financial tools and methods for determining the value of such companies. Uh, things like discounted cash flow, depending on the type of business, okay? Which is how most of these tech companies are able to raise money. So it's just the idea, somebody tests their assumptions how realistic are these assumptions? Then they discount these uh, cash flows that can be generated along with you know, different types of uh, valuation methods. Uh, so you can then have an average. At the end of the day, yes, you can value a non-existing business. It's just what I want to add. Thank so you. So it is actually possible to value a non-existent business. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Okay, so there you go. In case you're wondering, uh, I, I, I wish, well, if your business has not started yet, there's a way to go about it. And I, I will maybe uh, speak to those action points as we wind up. But let me go to Mansur now. And, and this one is particularly, uh, uh, I mean, it's come up time and again, and I'd just like you to speak to it. So which of these, I mean, the two, which of them are easier to you know, get access to? really um i know it's something we may have touched on but just to sing this in properly which of them is easier to get access to debt or equity thank you kaidi you see um from the angle uh, uh the investor is coming maybe the small business you know when you start at that moment you don't have capacity to pay your expense not to mention not taking a debt that you have to pay something plus so it's easily uh, it's easier at that time to get equity, and you know because when you look at the the equity uh, uh, part, you see that it starts from you first. Thus, part of it is easier for you to get some savings or you put some assets and put in the business. That's equity. It's easier for you yes to run to your father or to run to your family or friends to say okay I did this and and it can go. And it's easier also to see that someone will see this bright guy has been doing well since this thing is going to blow up. So he is now he will now invest. So it's easier to get equity at the initial stage. It is much, much riskier. Of course, debt comes when you have you started getting the ability to pay. And for ability for you to have ability to pay, the business must have run to show some positive signs, show that okay, this guy can pay. That's when the debt comes. So it's Actually, from the beginning, it's much easier to, to, to get equity than, than debt because of the requirement of the equity in that time. Of course, as you move forward, you see that uh, it's now becoming much difficult to get equity because you, you, for you to get larger, maybe much higher equity, you based yeah. on regulations, you, know, you have, must have some standards, go through uh, SEC and other things before, because probably you are going public, so the, the person in the, uh, the public need to be protected. So a lot of things go in. But when you are like family and friends, angel, angel investors, up to that level, you, you are like, because these are guys that are informed and they are ready to take your risk. So uh, depending on the way you see it, but it's much easier at the beginning of the business to start with mm -hmm. equity and to get equity is much easier than debt. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that has proven very vital. I, I'll need to take this other question. Uh, but this one will go to Ezine now. This question is from Abdurrahman uh, Hamzat. Uh, Abdurrahman Hamzat is actually a quite popular uh, listener on the show. I must commend you. And this question is simple. And, and I think it ties back to what we said last week. And I, I want us to deal with it because it's very specific. How can an upcoming exporter raise finance for their business? I, I don't know if an equity person wants to jump into exporting, if it's going to be through debt or loans. But Ezine, what would you prescribe? <laughs> Okay, so there are a couple of things available for exporters now. Um, you can go through your bank to assess loan for exports. Um, you can also specifically request for um, CBN loan for exports. And I'm also aware that um, Nexim does, um, they want export and import bank. Exporting and import bank. Yes, they also yeah. have specific loans that support exports are very um, discounted rates. So there are a couple of um, options available, but if it's for export, um, at this point, that means you're running your business and um, you're generating some funds and inflows. My suggestion would be for you to use that to um, drive that, okay? And consider all these other options um, that are available. So yes, oh. that would be my suggestion. Brilliant, thank you very much. And a little addition, Karadi. Uh, for the yes, benefit of the, yeah, there is what you call the NESP fund. Uh, just sorry to chip in and uh, interrupt. The NESP, if you reach out to the Nigeria Export Promotion Council, uh, there's a 50 billion or thereabout facility. So you can Ooh. get more details. Yeah, thank you. You see, you see why you should be a part of this show? Mm -hmm. I mean, you just heard that NESP funds, 50 billion naira available. This is not it's not audio money, by the way, right? It is real, real funds for businesses. So there you go. That's also something to explore. So just go online, type NESP funds, and just uh, follow the thread. You can get access. Uh, let me quickly come to um, uh, any tour now. Uh, and uh, as we wind down uh, on the show, we have just about two minutes to go. So this question is, uh, I'm going to break it between you and Ayo, okay? 
okay. So this question is about a desk for, or sort of regulation, you know, having a desk at BOI, BOA, Nexin that will offer a service and an affordable cost to SMEs. That's going to be for IO. And um, for you, um, Anito, I'd just like you to end on, 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 on this note. So I have decided as a person or as a business person on what to do, right? I have decided on what kind of uh, business, uh, so what kind of funds, what kind of finance I should get? What should be my next point of call? Should I go to a bank? Uh, should I go to uh, my lawyer? Should I get some financial advice? What should I do next as an action point? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can go ahead. Okay. Uh, so if you've already made up your mind on what you need to do, your next action point would actually be for you to create a financial story of yeah. what it is you plan to use the money for. When you have a, 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 a directive on how you want to spend money, I think getting it will now be the next thing, not going to it first. So if you've decided that the money you want to use, you want to use it for exploitation, you want to use it for, to fund your business, you want to do anything, then you can now go to the bank and get the money that you need, or you can go to your family and friends in terms of it. Okay. So 30 seconds, we're winding down. Uh, Ayo, is there a desk at BOI that will offer it, service at affordable rates to SMEs beyond, in terms yeah. of you know, getting value and all of that? Okay, there's what we call business service support providers in, in BOI. Uh, I'll right. just chip that in. It's some initiative that the bank has across the country, uh, okay. which helps small businesses to write up their business plan and handhold them across the country. So this is very critical. People should go check their business ESPs across the country. And it is at the okay. cost. I mean, the cost is borne by the bank. Thank you. Okay, there you go. Uh, we have to anchor there. By the way, there's more information on social media, BOI, and all of the banks mentioned there. I'd like to thank our panelists. You've been amazing, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, our audience, and not forgetting the crew here in Lagos and Abuja. Thank you so much uh, for being a part of this show. We're back next week. Until then, I'm Kaido Kikilu. Don't forget, keep making profit in all that you do. Goodbye. Bye-bye, Kaido. Well done. Thank you. Okay.